<coughs> thank you, Raúl. The next speaker is uh, Dr. Kutaro Yokote about the triglycerides rich lipoproteins and remnant cholesterol and met clinical needs. Thank you for the introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank Jen Scharth. Nice to see you again. And Jamila and all the organizers for giving me a chance to be here. This is my first visit to Morocco and also f to Africa. And I'm really enjoying the atmosphere. So uh, can I, uh, could you please give the, my slide? Yes, so I'd like to um, discuss about the TG-rich lipoprotein remnant cholesterol uh, f through the review of the global data and also our Japanese experience, of course. And please, uh, I, I have to do it by myself. Okay, my disclosure. And uh, already um, Raul has uh, elegantly described that statin is the central player for the a reduction in cardiovascular risk, but still, even after uh, usage of statin, there are up to 70% of so-called residual risk, and I believe this is the main theme for acubi activity. And uh, so, uh, in my talk, I'd like to uh, present TRL, uh, TG-rich riboplatine, uh, remnant cholesterol as a residual risk, and recent TG lowering clinical trials, as well as lessons from prominent and Japanese trials. Okay. All right. So one of the first studies to show, uh, other than statin, like ezetimibe, uh, added to statin, can reduce further residual risk, uh, was in uh, this uh, improved study. So in this study, uh, as you all know, that added to uh, simvastatin, ezetimibe reduced up to 6% uh, cardiovascular risk reduction in very high risk group. And so uh, to further lower LDL cholesterol, as Raul mentioned, is the one way to reduce residual risk. But as shown in Dr. Toss' study, like in this um, remaining uh, part, player for the residual risk would be triglyceride. And in this study, elevated TG uh, was uh, associated with the risk uh, even after addition of statin. So uh, TG reigns has to be a very important target for a long time. And as illustrated in John Charles' review, uh, one of the main player is remnant cholesterol and also remnant uptake in, in the uh, penetrating into the vascular wall to be uptaken by macrophage to make foam cells and also the containing triglyceride by action of uh, LPL, the giving fatty, free fatty acid to induce uh, inflammation. So these process will be uh, really uh, central to the progress of atherosclerosis. And as shown in Copenhagen General Population Study, as well as, as Copenhagen City Heart Study, the remnant cholesterol has been uh, associated with the uh, risk of uh, PAD, uh, peripheral artery disease, myocardial infarction, and also ischemic stroke. And these also shows the evidence for the remnant cholesterol importance in the atherosclerosis vascular disease. And also recently, Aruna and her group showed through the prospect case cohort study within the women, women heart study that TRL cholesterol is associated with increased risk of MI and also PAD. And at the same time, another important player to be uh, to known for in that high TG state through uh, generated through LPL and hepatic lipase activity, small dose lipoprotein. In this study, this was associated with increased risk of MI alone, but not PAD. So we have to consider both TRL and probably small dose LDL for the generation of residual risk in high TG state. This is a, a study from Japan that. Uh, under the situation of usage of statin, 
TG, uh, remnant cholesterol, was still associated with um, endothelial dysfunction as uh, evaluated by flow mediated dilatation. So even in the situation that statin is added, the reduced remnant cholesterol can improve FMD, a functionally endothelial dysfunction. And another study from Japan that even in the familiar hypercholesterolemia, that remnant lip lipoprotein cholesterol was associated with uh, severity of coronary artery disease. So in this kind of high cholesterol state, uh, remnant cholesterol can additively uh, promote atherosclerosis vascular disease. Then how about the uh, interventional trial? So this a classic accord lipid study, even after the addition of phenofibrate to the simvastatin in type 2 diabetes, it could not be uh, shown to reduce the cardiovascular risk. But however, in the high TG and low HDL state, that phenofibrate could show the reduced risk by 20%. And that's so if you have some optimal uh, TG lowering agent that you can sh it could be shown that the residual risk reduction by t uh, reducing TG will be achieved. And uh, meanwhile, uh, many of the Mendelian randomization trials show that, uh, for example, the genetic variation which is associated with lipoprotein lipase activity show that the genetically determined high TG state is associated with uh, atherosclerosis vascular disease, especially coronary artery disease. So this is also an evidence for the further uh, TG uh, playing role. So we like to go on to the recent TG lowering clinical trials that uh, reduce it trial, which was given by the high dose EPA, uh, highly purified EPA for four grams uh, compared to the placebo. So this was given 25% reduction of cardiovascular disease. This was very much similar to the JELUS trial, which has been uh, give, uh, made in Japan 20 years ago. And, uh, but on contrary, the strength trial using five, four grams DHA, EPA, free fatty acid type formula could not show the significant reduction compared to the placebo. So what are the difference between these two studies? So already shown that uh, in uh, reduced it trial, EPA has may given reduced triglyceride and also subtle reduction of LDL cholesterol, but in contrast, placebo gave significantly increased LDL cholesterol level. And also non-HDL cholesterol, so including LDL cholesterol as, that, as well as remnant lipoprotein cholesterol was reduced in EPA group, but it was significantly increased in placebo, so giving the uh, significant difference between the two groups. And also APOB increased in the placebo group, and high sensitive CRP increased in placebo and reduced in EPA group. So these are very unique characteristic of the parameter, lipid parameters in the uh, reduced trial. In contrast, in strength trial, uh, there was a significant but subtle change in TG reduction by DHA and EPA group, but no change between LDL cholesterol in the placebo and omega-3 group, as well as non-HDL cholesterol or apple B was not different between the two groups. So these are uh, background difference between the reduce it and uh, strength. And now we have the study uh, prominent, uh, probably uh, discussed further in the later sessions. So in this study, the Pema fibrate 0.4 milligrams were given, uh, contrasted to placebo in type 2 diabetes elevated with TG and low HDL cholesterol. 
and the cardiovascular outcome was followed. And as you all know, there was no significant difference between pemafibrate and placebo group. And uh, this um, data was really surprised to us. Then what can we learn from prominent and other like pemafibrate data, which we already have in Japan? So this is uh, the data from the prominent trial. So TG reduction was about 26% compared to placebo group in pemafibrate, and re remnant cholesterol reduced by 25.6% compared to placebo group. So this was rather a weaker uh, compared to what we experienced in Japanese clinical usage. And to our surprise that LDL cholesterol increased 12.3, and non-HDL cholesterol has no change from the baseline as well as uh, between pemafibrate and placebo group. And also APOB, uh, very subtle, but increased in pemafibrate, and this was significantly uh, larger compared to placebo group. So these were what we did not expect before. Because in Japanese experience of the phase three trial, uh, we repetitively experienced the TG reduction of about 40 to 50% by pemafibrate, and also non HDL cholesterol, uh, not so strongly, but up to 5 to 8% reduction uh, compared to the baseline or placebo. And LDL cholesterol, this often increased by up to 10%, but ApoB. Uh, we often uh, or usually see the reduction by 7%. So these profiles were quite different from our Japanese phase two, phase three trial compared to the prominent trial. And so we made some comparison between a pooled analysis of Japanese phase two and phase three uh, compared to prominent and without statin and with statin group in Japan. So as you see here, uh, nearly 40 to 50% reduction was obtained in Japanese population, whereas prominent has a 31% difference. So one part, there will be some ethnicity difference or BMI difference, but what else? And also for the LDL cholesterol, uh, even in Japan, Japanese trial, LDL cholesterol increased, but in prominent, the extent was larger, up to 14%. And non-HDL cholesterol, as you see pro in prominent, there was no significant de decrease, but even without statin or both with statin, in Japan, we repetitively see 8% uh, or 9% reduction. So, uh, and finally, APOB uh, in Japanese pool phase two and three trials, uh, reduction of uh, APOB was uh, observed and in prominent, it was increased. Probably this kind of change has uh, influenced the result. And why in the background status in Japan, um, not so intensive statin are usually used, mild to moderate, because of this was our previous Japanese guideline, which has been um, revised last year but we have been long used uh, LDL cholesterol management goal of like 100, even for secondary prevention. And this can be achieved by uh, mild, like uh, atorvastatin 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams, and rosuvastatin 5 milligrams. But as you all know, uh, in the prominent trial, uh, the statin of high intensity was exclusively used. So the base on LDL cholesterol was different. So this is very similar to the previous fibrid trials, like HHS, VA, HIT, BIP, FIELD, Accord, Lipid. All of them, LDL cholesterol baseline level was like 100 to 180, very high. Japanese status is still similar to this situation. And in the prominent study, LDL cholesterol baseline was 
lower than 80 milligram per deciliter. So this background difference might affect the effect of uh, TG-rich uh, lipoprotein reduction and probably cardiovascular outcome. So we made additional uh, analysis from Japanese phase two and phase three trial using pimafibrate, comparing the baseline LDL cholesterol level and further reduction of non-HDL cholesterol. In the high LDL cholesterol level, then the, we could uh, tended to achieve very efficient non-HDL cholesterol reduction, but in the lower LDL cholesterol level, the extent was reduced. And similar data was observed for APOB. In the higher LDL cholesterol range, the reduction of APOB was uh, prominent, and but not in the low <coughs> LDL cholesterol. So probably if the LDL cholesterol was strictly controlled, the effect of uh, sperm alpha in the further reduction of non h cholesterol or APOB can be attenuated, probably, that this is only one speculation. And what about the small dense LDL, another role player in the high TG status? So uh, Dr. Hirano at Showa University Japan has made interesting uh, analysis on, from the published prominent data, calculating small dense LDL by use of Sam Dr. Sampson's uh, equation. And according to this data, uh, Pema fibrate surprisingly did not uh, show a really a strong reduction of small dense LDL, even though the drug has reduced TG significantly. And this was not different from placebo group. So when the LDL cholesterol level is tightly regulated uh, controlled by high intensity statin, there may be attenuated change in small dense LDL. And another possibility is that this is our experience that we uh, gave Pema fibrate in a case of lipoprotein lipase deficiency. And in this case, LPL activity or LPL mass is not changed because uh, the patient do not have LPL. Uh, protein at all, but you could see hepatic lipase concentration and hepatic lipase activity increased dramatically by use of pemafibrate. As you notice that HL hepatic lipase is important in generation of small dense LDL, so there might be, um, theoretically talking, it can counteract by uh, increase in small dense LDL in some kind of situation. So finally, this is my summary slide. Of course, the, it is undoubtedly important that statin-based LDL cholesterol lowering therapy is a central player of uh, prevention of atherosclerosis. And also, from the mechanistic view and the previous evidence, that remnant cholesterol and the TG-rich lipoprotein is important in uh, promotion of atherosclerosis. And we need to further discuss um, this kind of issues like impact of TG in TG-rich lipoprotein in intensively lowered LDL in the uh, European and the US guideline, but how about in the situation of mildly moderately lowered LDL, like in Japanese situation, I think Pema fibrate has role in prevention of atherosclerosis uh, in a very significant manner. And also is TG itself as a risk factor or can be used as a biomarker. And finally, in patient with high TG at baseline, that non-HDL cholesterol and ApoB shall be or can be paid more attention as a treatment targets, not just like TG itself. And this can be, we need to have more data and more discussion to go on. Thank you very much for your attention.